an exclusive look at a local charity that is redefining the word hero, up next on Carpe Diem. and welcome to Carpe Diem. I'm Victoria Rosas. In recent years, cosplay has grown immensely. Cosplay, or costume play, is the art of creating costumes and piecing together accessories to represent a character. Characters from all forms of entertainment are recreated, especially at major comic conventions like New York's Comic-Con, but none are recreated as much as superheroes. One individual with a big heart has turned cosplay into a way to impact young lives. Professional cosplayer Adana Velez has become a major staple in the world of cosplaying for her innovative and creative designs. She also has won multiple awards for various cosplay contests and has been featured in several global magazines, television shows, podcasts, and panels. More recently, Adana has become well known for her charity, Heroes, where she picks a terminally ill or disabled child once a year and takes them on adventures built for a hero. Please welcome to the show, Adana Velez. Adina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Victoria, for having me. Anytime. We can't thank you enough. <laughs> so right out of the gate, I have to ask you, how did you get into such a cool, unique hobby? Um, I will always go to New York City Comic Con with my children, and I just, I just, you know, it's such a great feeling when you go there. The community is so welcoming, and you look at these costumes, and you're just like in awe at the craftsmanship and just like the positive energy from everyone. So um, I will actually, I started making um, the costumes for my kids and then after a while I was like, you know what, I could do this. I can actually get into this. This is actually something that I love. I always read comics. I am a big gamer. So so this was, was natural for you. Yes. you this was a natural <laughs> love for you, honestly. Absolutely. Absolutely was. I the first time I put on a costume, I couldn't I couldn't stop. <laughs> I couldn't Do stop you remember there. your first costume that you created or worked on? Oh my God! Yeah, I did. I think um, what was it? Uh, Harley Quinn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's she's classic, and there's gonna be a new movie, and she'll be in it. Will you be go seeing it's Suicide Squad? Will you be yes, doing that? Yes, absolutely. We'll be watching the Suicide Squad. So you, so of course, you know, you this is a natural love for you. So you keep up with you know all the new comics, all the new heroes, mm -hmm. and so you probably know facts about any superhero, really. Um, I'm I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you know your stuff, but about you though, you've turned it into such a fantastic thing Thank you. Um, for yourself and you know we'll talk about heroes as well but for you what does cosplaying do for you how does it impact your life and even your kids lives uh, it, it's actually some an outlet it's a positive outlet where you can actually just be creative and just be expressive you take your favorite um, characters from whatever fandom and you just bring them to life so just the creativity of it and teaching my kids that look this is something that you can actually build and be proud of and use it for a positive cause actually has impacted me really much and just you know just the community is so welcoming and such a positive um, atmosphere that I couldn't help myself. I started adding a whole bunch of cosplay groups on Facebook. Um, I'm an admin for um, a Marvel group. I have a Game of Thrones group. A whole bunch of geek groups. I actually admin about nine different You go all Facebook. out. Yes. You're committed. <laughs> I'm committed. <laughs> I'm very committed. And actually, I started working with um, comic conventions. What, what are some conventions that we can actually see you at or that you've worked on yourself? I actually work for EternalCon and WinterCon, but and I help out Garden State here and there. Um, I am going to Garden State. I'm going to Undiscover Con at the end of the month. I will be at EternalCon, of course, running around like crazy. <laughs> um, I will be at Garden State. I will be at ACBC. 
Um, I have a table at Terrificon at the Mohegan Sun, so I'm very excited about that. Very cool, very awesome. Yeah, I have tables at all of these conventions, so it's pretty good. Awesome. So when you're actually a part of the committee to plan some of these conventions, what are what are what is your process? What are some things that you love to incorporate at these conventions? The fact that I can actually control the whole um, uh, the whole event for the performance and everything else, like the panels and and just let my creativity soar. Mm. I love it. That's something that I really do enjoy doing. Um, I'm great on the pressure, so running around and just taking care of the cosplayers, making sure that the photographers are in place, making sure that the panels are going in at the right place, being in a panel, <laughs> and then judging. So it's I, it's what I love. I It's just... It's what I love. <laughs> when, you, when you're at a panel and you're speaking at a panel, what are some things you make it a point to bring up or, or what do you actually talk about during those panels? Uh, one of the things that I actually focus on the most is the fact that I want everyone to know that in cosplay, there is no size. Size does not matter. It doesn't matter how tall, big, wide you are. If you love a character, go for it. Um, there's no gender, no religion, no sexual orientation. So cosplay is open for everyone. And you are determined, I mean, you are called a cosplayer as soon as you put on a costume. It doesn't matter if you bought it, if you um, bought it and then altered it, or if you made it from scratch. So I just want to end the stigma of the real cosplayer being the person that actually builds this from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's whatever your persona is, okay? You know, you put on a costume and you have fun, that's what really matters, and that's what cosplay is all about. It's about having fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of, you know, whether you buy the costume or you make the costume, you actually do make your own costumes, though. I do. So, how, like, and detailed as ever. And so how, how do you go about this? How do you plan this out? And what are some costumes that we can actually look forward to seeing you in soon? Oh, I'm actually working on um, Satana. Not to be confused with Zatanna. Uh, it's a Marvel cosplay. She's actually the daughter of the devil. <laughs> but she is an actually awesome comic. So um, I'm going to be wearing, I'm working on that right now. And um, this weekend at East Coast Comic Con, I'm going to be wearing the Invisible Woman. Awesome. That's so Thank cool. You. Ugh, that's so, it's so exciting. Thank you. So how long does it take for a costume to be put together? What's the timeline? <sighs> Ooh, honey, <laughs> I have put costumes together anywhere between three days or it could take me a year or more. Oh, wow. Because see, we're never satisfied with what we have and we always try to change it up a bit or add this or add that. So it could take forever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's never a time that it's a process. Yeah. I built 24 cosplays just last year. No, actually, sorry. Let me, let me um, fix that. I did 27 cosplays last year alone. Oh, man. And mm -hmm. so you're piecing this together and designing it yourself completely. I do. Um, I do actually get some help here and there whenever I can. If it's intricate, in the sewing department, I do have a seamstress that do, does help me. She is my savior, Gloria Ellen Pinnell, which is amazing. Um, she helps me out with the most intricate things that I can do. But I do all of my props from scratch and most of the things that you see me wearing, I actually do. Build. So it, it really takes a team to put everything together? Uh, here and there, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes a village. That's awesome. So I do, you know, in getting to you, obviously, you know, we'll, like I said, we'll talk about heroes, but you really do have a big heart other than heroes. Tell us about your some volunteer work that you've done. I know you were actually a volunteer for the NYPD. Uh, yeah, I uh, actually was an auxiliary sergeant for about seven to eight years, mm -hmm. I forgot. I got a lot of commendations and merit awards. It was a good time. Awesome. So you've kind of taken your way of giving back and brought it over to Heroes now. Yes, actually, since a young child, I actually would um, volunteer. I volunteered for the Red Cross when 9-11 happened. 
um, done multiple toy drives. Um, so uh, you've got such a big heart. Thank you. That's so awesome. Thank you. So now with Heroes and getting to that, how has Heroes been, you know, an impact to the young lives that you're working with? Oh, uh, immensely. I have two little heroes, um, started with Joshua Santana, who was my first hero. And initially I was gonna just stay with one hero a year, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> I just couldn't, I couldn't. Um, I met Sean Kuko, who's um, 12 years old. He has um, Down syndrome. Um, and Joshua has osteosarcoma and leukemia. So I take them both. I t um, I take them to comic conventions. I make them their own cosplay, and they have the time of their lives when they're there. We definitely have to take a look at that. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look at Adana's world and how Heroes is making a major difference. So I have been featured in Cosplay Culture magazine for quite a while. Um, actually, a few more than a few times. So here I am. This is where this was the ACBC feature. Um, I'm over here as well because I did their fashion show. This is my Cassandra K most treasure possession. This is actually an art by Thomas Branch. I did Cassandra K about three years ago, and the artist lo loved it so much that he actually sent me this. Custom made. There's still some details that I need to do. I have to alter them because I made them too big. I'm gonna be cutting these down and these goes here. I did a, an Assassin's Creed Catwoman crossover. This was old stitch by hand. It's pure leather. I take terminally ill children and disabled children and I make them a hero for a whole year. I have two heroes now. Joshua Santana, who's right here, and um, Sean Kugo, who's actually 12 years old. He has um, Down syndrome and Joshua has osteosarcoma and leukemia. I've been very blessed that I haven't given them up at all. It was supposed to be one child a year and I just couldn't let go and I just added and I couldn't, I can't let them both go. So I'm gonna keep them as long as I can and whoever comes along, I will pick up as well. And what I do is I bring them to comic conventions, I make them their own costumes. And um, when, they, when they're in the hospital, I go visit them, um, bring them whatever they need. costume I don't see like the cape ones you see making someone's day changing their lives making them happy that's why I cosplay to bring joy to others and for Idina she's a really good mentor she's a really good organizer of these events I love what she's doing I wish more people would do this because it benefits everyone in at the end of the day and that's why I put on the suit doing with this event, uh, her organization for Heroes, is something that more people should definitely get involved in, in holding events for you know children who can't make it to these fun things but want to be a part of the fun. Um, you know, if you have a kid who's sick and they can't be a part of this bigger world that's out there, that's fun, that's full of heroes and things that they like, it's always a great idea when you can bring the party to them. So I definitely commend her for that, for getting us all together to make Joshua's day like a lot more special. He's having a great time, so I feel like a hero. Joshua, he's here and he's enjoying his heart out and he's fighting through everything. 
And that's what matters the most, that we can bring joy to children in any situation and, you know, put on this mask and show them a great time. And every child deserves that. Every child deserves to be happy. And we came out here today ready to give this child a great time. These kids, you know, they want to do the same thing that we want to do. And just the fact that what she's doing for all of us, it's amazing. The hard work that she's putting into this, it, it's, it's, that's a true hero right there. Just the amount of work she's putting into this to allow us to just come here, enjoy this with the kids, yeah. take pictures, have fun, and yeah. just enjoy it. Listen, without further ado, we want to uh, award Joshua with a, with a certificate. So for being Raymond and Flanagan's number one hero, uh, hopefully you have fun. And, and, and to your mom from somewhere, thank you so much. And I uh, hope you have fun. Please, please. There you go, Joshua. We'll take a picture, man. We'll take a picture later. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause. Heroes! From this video, you can really see how Heroes is changing lives for the better in a super cool way. Adana, you're really doing a beautiful thing. Tell us a little bit more about how much you contribute to Joshua and Sean's life. Well, Joshua was in the hospital for four months. Um, in those four months, it was really touch and go with his life. Um, there were some really, really, really dark times where the doctors actually prepared us for the worst. So I try to actually make his life a little bit brighter. I will go um, almost every other weekend uh, with my boyfriend and we would, I will go in and out of cosplay. I would be there for hours. I would play with him uh, with video, video games. And I actually sponsored his eighth birthday at the mm, hospital. That's awesome. Thank so you, you brought the party to him. I did. <laughs> he was in partial isolation, so I actually got um, permission from the doctors, and I got a couple of his friends from school, just a few, because they, they're not a lot of people were allowed to come, right. and uh, just a few couple of um, family members, and I just surprised him. I brought him this big Batman cake and balloons and a whole bunch of gifts, and I spoiled my little baby. So, um, you know, it's not only the heroes that I show support to. I also show support to the parents as well. Um, his mother is a young mother. Um, she's single. And to be going through something like this, so it's you've been hard. you've been there for her. You've created a bond Absolutely. with her. Absolutely, she's like a sister to me. From the moment that we that we spoke the first time, we just automatically clicked. And she's just such an amazing girl and so strong. She's like one of the strongest women that I've known. And you know, she's like family now. And I can't get rid of Joshua. <laughs> like I said, um, it's supposed to have been for a year. I have him for more. You know, I, it's been like a year and a half already, and I still have him. Now with Sean, it was a mm -hmm. little bit different. Sean actually is not terminally ill, but he is disabled. Mm -hmm. I met him at ACBC last year. Um, his dad actually asked me for an for, uh, autograph and a picture. <laughs> and Sean started following me around the whole convention. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So his dad was like, oh, my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, and I love kids. I have yeah. three of my own. So I grabbed his little hand and I actually walked around the convention with him. So it oh, wasn't that's awesome. a bad thing. And I'm sure you made his day. He, yeah, he had so much fun. I actually got him on stage with me and he had a blast. And then from there, you know, it clicked on me. I was like, you know what? If I can do this for one child, I can do it for two. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I was actually, a lot of it was coming out of my own pocket. Oh, wow, okay. So I just made a sacrifice and... I brought him into the charity, and he's been with me ever since. We've been we've gone to countless um, conventions, and his dad is also single, and he's up there in age. And not too long ago, he actually asked me if anything was to happen to him, being that he doesn't have a lot of family, um, if I could take Sean. Oh my goodness! Custody of Sean. Wow. If in case he passes away. And 
I kind of agreed. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> no, help but you. that just goes to show like how strong you are and how you know how much how big of a heart you know I really refer to you as that because you really do have a big heart and you're you're, you. you're willing to give so much and you mentioned too that this is most of the things that you've been doing at first was a lot of it out of your pocket yeah so now um are you I know we actually got to see footage and that footage was actually from Raymore and Flanagan an event with them yes. so tell us how you're working with some you know other organizations to you know raise funds for heroes I have been very blessed that a lot of people actually like what I'm doing. So uh, the Food and Drug Administration actually had me come in on May 23rd, I believe. Um, and they actually had me in for Women Empowerment Month. And I got to speak about heroes and actually get the word out. Um, and also Raymore Flanagan asked me to come in and they actually did an honoring for heroes and that's about you guys actually saw in the footage. Right. So they actually want to become sponsors now. Oh wow, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank that's you. Awesome. So they kind of sponsoring me a little bit here. You know, every little cent helps. Definitely. Because it, it gets expensive. And I understand, too, that you're actually on your way to becoming a nonprofit organization. I am. I am. I'm actually a couple of hundred dollars away from becoming a nonprofit, and with God will, I'll be able to do that like by the end of the month. Where do you, so, what, what, what do you see for the future of Heroes? I want to <laughs> get a non-for-profit and actually build it that's more. That's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. I actually do a lot of other stuff as well in the name of Heroes. I, have, I go out and speak to inner city kids about what a convention is. I, my surprise a lot of children don't know what a convention is mm -hmm. and what cosplay is all about so I bring that to them I teach them what well I actually do like a little presentation and I bring in a couple of my props and they 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 like wow I didn't know about this yeah. this is actually pretty cool mm -hmm. and a lot of kids are into gaming so they know like a lot of the characters and I'm, I tell them I'm like you could dress up like this you don't have to wait until Halloween to have this fun. You can actually do it all year round. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conventions other than New York City Comic Con. That's the big one. So yes. I'm assuming, it's. I think it goes without saying that you do go to Comic Con. Actually, yes I do. And I actually, last year, I hosted the JLA meetup for them. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that was so, pretty yeah, fun moment. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And so Heroes is definitely growing, it getting is. the word out. So how can someone, if they wanted to contribute to Heroes, what are the best ways to get in touch with you or to get in touch with the organization? Uh, you can add me on Facebook, Dana Velez. I don't, um, I don't take any, I, I don't deny anyone, sorry. I don't deny anyone. So you can reach out to me on Facebook or you can actually go to the Heroes website, which is www, um, a -D -A -Z, like zebra, a -E, 2003wixcom slash heroes or GoFundMe slash a day of a in one word. Awesome. Thank so you. people, I'm, this is a huge thing. And I think, you know, it goes to show that you're one person, but you're doing so much for these kids and you have bonded with so many. We also got to see a couple of your friends as well yeah, who they friends. contribute to heroes as well. So how do they contribute and help you out at the overall events for heroes? Well, perfect example, Josh, when I first met Joshua, he actually wanted to meet Batman and um, Robin, he's a big Teen Titan fan, so I made that happen for him. Awesome. I brought in my friends, um, you know, because I have the privilege of adding some groups. I'm actually um, well known and have a lot of cosplay friends, and I get a lot of support from them. So they actually came out and visited him at the hospital. And also, as you can see, for the Raymore Flanagan, um, event, a lot of the cosplayers came out and showed their love and support, which meant the world to me. Definitely. And even today, we have a special um, someone that came out to support. So You have a huge a team behind yeah, you, for I, sure. I do have a big team behind me and pretty much love, so I can't thank my cosplayers enough. No. You, you guys are really doing a great... You guys are like your own Justice League in a way. <laughs> you're, you're your own team of heroes for well, sure. Well, you know what? We're not the heroes. The kids are the heroes. They're the ones that are going through so much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's nothing. Even though I'm disabled myself, and this is what actually made me start the foundation and the love for my kids, 
you know, they have gone through way more than I have. So I'm not the hero. The, uh, the cosplayers are not the heroes. It's the children. They're the heroes. Do you, and so you foresee that in the future you'll definitely take in more children as absolutely. the years go by, for sure? Oh, absolutely. If anyone wants to submit um, a proposal for a child to be taken in by the foundation, they can just hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and I will actually reevaluate it and consider it. Now, getting back to you a bit as well, you said you're a mom of three. I am. And you, like I said before, you also volunteered for the NYPD. What else, what else don't we know about Adana? <laughs> what, like, what bad things do you do? Like, we need to know. <laughs> There's got to be something. Well, um, yeah, I'm no one to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you're I'm tough. Very, and you're tough I am and tough. You're, I, I'm a mom. Heart. I'm a single mom. So, you know, I have the loving side and I also have my strict side where, you know, things need to get done and this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, no matter what, though, you're there for your kids, whether they're your own or whether they're Joshua or Sean or any kid that or comes to Or the cosplayers. Or the you cosplayers, know, yep. even. Even though we might be in the same age range or, you know, they might be a little bit younger, I still take care of them and protect them like if they were my, my children. Mm -hmm. I just can't help it. That, that's a, the mom side of me. Right. And um, what else can I tell you? Um, <laughs> well, actually, I do want to know what's next for Heroes. Do we have another event that we can look forward to in the next couple of months or well i am going to be taking heroes to garden state and i'm going to be taking them hopefully to acbc so i'm trying That's to reach right. out to them yeah okay awesome so we can and definitely look forward. we can definitely look forward to seeing what's going on with heroes definitely got to stay in tune with you adana again we can't thank you enough but thank one last you. thing i have to ask what's your favorite superhero or what's your favorite superhero movie you've seen there's a bunch they're all over the place now Oh my gosh, my favorite superhero. Can I tell you my top three? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. You can't just pick one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when I was when I was younger, a teenager, I would collect Catwoman <laughs> and Lady Death and Vampirella comics. Three amazing, awesome ones. I got I, I, Adina, thank you. thank you so much. Thank this you was fantastic. so much. Thank you, Adina, for joining us. If you Thank would like you. more information about this episode of Carpe Diem or any other Carpe Diem, you can write to us at the email address on your screen, carpediem at mail.montclair.edu, or give us a call at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Victoria Rosas. Thank you so much for watching.